welcome to the practice problems video for domain and range. Okay, here's problem number one. We're going to state the domain and range of each function depicted here. So let's start with part A, or graph A. Uh, so domain, that means what are the possible values of our independent variable. So independent variable is uh, denoted with the horizontal axis, so I'll just label those x and y. Okay, so domain is going to be uh, how far left do we go and how far right do we go. So the left bound is going to be negative 5, and it's a closed dot, which means we need a square bracket on that. Then we have comma, our upper bound, which is 3 in this case, okay? And we have an open dot there, so that means we have an open, um, an open bracket, or a rounded bracket, that is, okay? And the range, that means how high up or down can we go, which is, um, like, what are the possible, what's the set of possible output values we could have? So that means for y. Um, so the lowest our y goes is 0, right? That means the x-axis. So it's it's 0 down here, so um, inclusive. So that means 0, and then all the way up to 2. And that's what's important, or, well, it's important to note that um, right here, the point that I'm filling in right there, that's a closed dot, right? And this one over here is an open dot. So even though uh, we have an open dot here, that and you'd think, well, does that not include 2? But the thing is that, yes, our function does take the value of 2 at this point. So, yeah, it does reach 2 eventually. So we have a 2 there with a square bracket, okay? So now let's do the same thing for part B, our graph B. So our domain is going to be, let's see how far left or right do we go. So that would be negative 3 and then a closed dot, so that means square bracket. And it goes all the way to the right um, to 2, but it doesn't include 2. So we need that rounded bracket there, okay? And then uh, lastly, the range. So how high up and how high or, or and how low do we go uh, on our function? So the bottom bound for our range is going to be negative five, inclusive, negative five here, and uh, the highest is a positive four, inclusive as well. Okay. Okay. Number two says to state the domain for f of x is equal to three minus the square root of six minus two x. So the thing here is that we need to note. Are there any restrictions on what x can or can't be? Okay, and the thing is, we see okay. Oh, here's a square root sign, uh, and that's important because we can't take the square root of a negative number. Okay, so I'll just write that down because it's so important. So can't or we're not allowed to take uh, the square root of a negative number. Okay, so that means that whatever's on the inside, so whatever is on the inside. So in this case, six minus two x. Whatever's on the inside has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? It could equal zero, that's fine. Like I've said before, you can take the square root of zero and it's just zero. So that's there's no harm in that, but we can't take the square root of a negative number, okay? So it has to be either zero or a positive number, and then we just solve for x. So um, how do we do that? We're just gonna move this two x to the other side. So we're gonna add it there. And then we have six is greater than or equal to two x. We just divide by two, a positive two on both sides and we get x is less than or equal to a 3, okay? So let me rewrite it over here. So x is less than or equal to 3. So this is um, acceptable as a domain. That's our inequality form. In set builder notation, this would be x, uh, well, curly bracket, or curly brace, x um, line thing, vertical line, x is less than or equal to 3, okay? That's another way. This is our set builder. And the final way is uh, using interval notation, and that would give us, so x is less than or equal to 3, so 3 is our upper bound, inclusive. And then on the left side, we have anything lower, so that means negative infinity and a rounded brace there. So any of these would work uh, to state the domain for our given function.